Sasha. Obviously, we can't cover the whole subject. So, my question is, I feel like our clients, you know, see us as therapists. How do we absorb all of this information that we're told by people? Because people have told me some really horrible, awful things. Yeah. And that how do you not carry that home? There's a couple things you can do. It's a great question. Is how do you, how do you, you know, um, pardon me, how do you water off a duck's ass? Yeah. A lot of the stuff that you're hearing. <laughs> That's her saying. That's her saying. That's her saying. <laughs> well, clearly you're already equipped. You really don't need my help. <laughs> If you've ever uttered that phrase, you know where I'm coming from. Yeah. Suggestion number one, go downstairs and find the loudest blow dryer you can. Okay. All the blow dryer guys want to suck. Ooh, this is a quiet blow dryer. No, 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 I want the loud one. Because okay. you just blow dryer going. That's what I do. Okay, on one level you don't listen. Uh, literally, yeah. you don't listen. Okay. On another level, you, you tune out. Mm -hmm. The other thing is you don't invest in this. You can't take some of this stuff. You know, one of my favorite little stories or little things to share with people is when I sold my salon and there was no social media at this point but the word got out pretty quick I even sold the salon he's not going to be here anymore I started traveling and teaching full-time and I was not going to be cutting hair in a salon I got a lot of phone calls people called my cell phone because we still had cell phones then people called my house and I had two different phone calls from two different camps I had people who called me on the telephone who said things like oh my god this is so exciting you sold the business what are you doing next those are friends I had other people who called my house and said, oh my God, how could you do this to me? What am I going to do about my hair? <laughs> There's 22,000 licensed cosmetologists in the state of Illinois. Somebody go cut your hair. I'm doing something else now. So I think most importantly is to really create, make sure you have that clear distinction or separation that these are clients and this is a business. We can't stop them from sharing some of these things. Some of the things they may share are disturbing or challenging or difficult. One of the greatest suggestions, you really gotta stay out of it. You know, when a client gets divorced, if we cut the husband and the wife's hair or both partners hair, somebody keeps the hairdresser in the divorce. And a client is lost over it. Seriously. You know, you don't always get to pick. Sometimes custody is sorted out when you're not around. <laughs> Seriously. But most importantly, I think the best advice I can give you is you've got to you've got to separate yourself from it. And <coughs> smile and nod and listen and it goes in one ear and out the other. Don't offer a lot of response. Offer a lot of nodding and smiling and listening. You know, my son called me the other day and, and he wanted to talk about what had gone on in the barber shop over the previous political season. Because you know, in cosmetology school they tell us in the book, we're not going to talk about politics, religion, and sex. Mm -hmm. Right? It says it in the book. What do we talk about in the barbershop? Oh, we talk about politics, religion, sex, and sports. Yeah. Okay, that, that's layered in there for extra. What was interesting, and I wrote a blog post, and I never sent it into modern, because as I wrote the blog post, I just didn't feel comfortable publishing it. And I'm going to come back, because my son brought up the subject, I'm going to come back and revisit the conversation. But his question was, how did it go in the barbershop through the last political season? And the interesting answer was, I cut hair in this barbershop through this primary and presidential election, no one ever brought it up. Literally, we never talked about it. Because in the past, you talk about what candidate you believe in. We were talking about issues. We were talking about other things. But this election was so toxic and so contentious that I think people understood there's no winning in a social engagement about it. So rather than get into it, we just didn't touch it. And it was actually kind of weird that it just never came up. And every once in a while, somebody, you know, we'd have the TV on, and one of these people would be on a television saying something, and a client would make a comment, and it would, like, float out into the room and die. Because no <laughs> one would touch it. And it was actually kind of cool. Yeah. And it took a lot of restraint on the part of a lot of us who maybe felt one way or another politically. But I think everybody in our shop kind of understood you ain't gonna win with this. Just whatever you think, whatever you feel, whatever you believe, just don't touch it. Mm -hmm. So I think there's another lesson with that is, is you know.